now, I said earlier, you have to understand... Oh, let me show you another bit of magic, and then we'll approach the uh, secondary dominance, and then you'll maybe sure. we'll get a clear picture. I showed you this once before. This is the magic. Uh, this is such cool magic. Mm -hmm. If you lower any single one of the notes of the diminished seventh chord, you get a different dominant seventh chord. So if I lower this note a half step, I get an F7 chord. This is F7. Okay, play the original one. Now here's my diminished seventh shape. I lowered one of the notes and I got an F7. Let's lower another one. Let's lower this one. Okay. I get if I lower this, I can't do that, so I bar. Okay. I get that's a B7 chord. Okay. Right now, if I uh, which one was I doing this one? Yeah. If I lower this one, I get a D7 chord. Okay. All right. If I lower this one. I get an A-flat-7 chord. Oh, man. So there's a very, very close relationship between diminished sevenths and dominant sevenths. Okay. Okay. Um, they're much more flexible than dominants, though. They can, they just, they want to travel even more so than dominants do. Oh, okay. They, they really want to go places. Okay. Is that another way of saying that is a... They need, they're sort of movement chords, they're not, uh, right. they, they need to sort of resolve somehow or go yes, somewhere? Absolutely, sort of they're thing. passing chords, they cannot sit still. Okay. Um, in fact, there was, I think I mentioned this once before too, but in the Leonard Bernstein Harvard lectures, um, he takes a Mozart piece, and Mozart is using diminished seventh chords, but by, by nature of the bass that he puts in the, in the, the basses, uh, it sounds like a series of dominant seventh chords moving in, in fifths, huh. right? But when he takes the basses off, it sounds like modernistic avant-garde music, really? you know, like atonal, you know. As soon as he took the basses off, you uh -huh. know. So the bass notes define what dominant seventh it is. If you don't have the bass, you have to kind of, uh, you know, if they're moving chromatically, you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. You know. And that's what they were doing. They moved kind of chromatic. Oh, okay. Wish I could demonstrate. Yeah, I could demonstrate. Here's my bass. Another bass moving in fifths. Now, if I no bass, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. By the way, ancient device to create humor in like in uh, silent movies and stuff. That's, that's right. you know. Yeah, that stuff is all way cliche now. You don't do that stuff anymore. <laughs> all right, so now we see a connection between dominant sevenths and dimin uh, diminished sevenths. Now we have to learn how do I replace a dominant seventh chord with a diminished seventh chord. All right, now remember Every chord in the chord family template has its brother dominant seventh that moves to it. Remember that? Right. So in the key of F, C7 moves to F, D7 moves to G minor, E7 moves to A minor, F7 moves to B flat, G7 moves to C7, A7 moves to D minor. Okay. And that's the one we want to think about for the moment. Okay. A7 moving to D minor. Why? Well, we get um, uh, C. I'm uh, sorry. Um, All right, C. Moving to D minor, but with a passing. All right, with me so far? Yeah. Now, what it's really doing, what it's really suggesting, is. A7 to D minor. Okay. All right, you hear that? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we have this note in an A7 chord, and in fact, when we do a diminished seventh, right, we have if we put an A in the bass, we'd have A, C sharp, G, that, and E. So that's an A7 chord. The only different note is this one here, a B flat. I'm sorry, uh, here, B flat. So now if I do an A7, but now I'm going to throw the B flat in there. Look at that shape, diminished seventh, mm -hmm. right? This chord is called A7 flat 9. 
Okay. Flat nine chords travel, they're very natural um, oh. to go to my, to relax to minor chords. Okay. All right, so uh, give an example. If I'm in the key D minor. Okay. Spanish music. Well, not not yeah, just, but yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here, here, let me show you. Like, all right, here's a diminished seventh chord. Remember, I said we're one note from a seventh chord. If I lower this B flat, I get an A seven chord. Okay. So, but this, when we raise it, adds a little bit more color, as opposed to. Right. That's much more conservative, you notice. Yeah. Right? So what this diminished seventh doing, it's acting as a passing chord and it's replacing out the A7 that would go to D minor. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And we have, like when we get to the chorus, we get a few of those going on. All right? Oh, okay. But again, you know, if you see two scale steps and you want to, you just fill in with a diminished seventh in between if you want to create a line. C to D. Okay. C to D. Fill it in. Mm -hmm. All right. So you follow the roots where okay. the roots go, and there is no root to diminished seventh. All four notes are really a root in a diminished seventh because okay. everything is so equal in the chord. Okay. Dumb question: Are you a lot of times playing just four notes with a diminished seventh, or are you playing the entire? Uh, normally, when I play a diminished seventh, I, I just have the four notes. It's hard to configure a full six string okay. diminished seventh okay. chord. Okay, it requires some finger gymnastics. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, finger. Well, this here's a G note, so I can bar this and get the G. Okay. And then to get the other G, I'd have to use my thumb. That's kind of a handful right there. Yeah, no kidding. And this one, forget about it. That's a baseball man. Yeah. So let me show you the shapes of diminished seventh chords that, okay. that are very usable. One is this one. So let's say we're doing, we'll call it a G, you could call, by the way, you could call a diminished chord by any one of the four notes that are in it. In other words, I could call this a G diminished seven, a B flat diminished seven, a C oh. sharp, all right? Okay. Because again, the, the roots are equal in this chord. There's no, there's no overwhelming root in this chord. It's okay. too unstable. All right, so this is the first shape, and we're going to call it a G diminished by the high root G. Okay. We have, all right, so to build it, pinky on the third fret of the E string. You skip a string, go to the G string, and put your third finger there. Okay. Then in between we have the B string. We're going to go to the second fret with the middle finger, and then skip a string and go to the second fret with the first okay. finger. Okay. Okay, that's one. And by the way, they repeat every step and a half, so... They all function the same way. In other words, if I go, I can also go, or I can go, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry. They're all the same chord. Okay. All right. What I did was went C, C sharp, diminished D minor in all of those cases. But what I did, the diminished seventh chord, I did it all the different steps and they all worked is what okay. I'm trying to demonstrate. They're all the same, which is really handy because you could always find a diminished seventh somewhere in the neighborhood. Oh, okay. All right, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know. <laughs> you go to the diminished seventh taxi stamps. <laughs> right. <laughs> Haul so, it over. <laughs> so, all right, so... Uh, So the, the, the non-theoretical easy way is if you have two scale steps, you fill in the middle with a diminished seventh chord. All right. Okay. All right. Now the other shape, uh, this would also be a G diminished seventh, okay, mm -hmm. because here's my G right here. And again, you could call it by any of the notes, but we're, we're just calling it by G for okay. default. So here we're starting now on the B string, pinky on the fifth fret, skip a string, third finger on the fifth fret. Mm -hmm. All right. Now here in the space in between, we have to go back two frets to the third fret with our first finger. Okay. And then the middle finger sits up here on the fourth fret. Okay. It'll take a little getting used to uh, in the beginning, but not so terribly sure. difficult. Sure. This one may or may not be hard, depending on the flexibility or the bending flexibility of your fingers. The next one, this is the one I use all the time because it's really handy. Um, to get a G diminished seventh in this case, let's say, uh, all right, well, here's my G. 
I go, I skip, wait, I skip two strings now. Okay. My third finger goes to the G string. All right. We're both on the third fret here. Now, I need an E and a C sharp. Now, I could go like this to get all those notes, but what I do is I bar these, and then I use these two. Okay. So, G, B flat, A, I mean E, and also C sharp. And I'm okay. barring that. Again, the other way to do it, I've seen guitar players do it this way, is like that. It's either this or this. Okay. In this case, it's third finger, third fret, go down two strings, go to the G string, third fret, mm -hmm. and uh, here on the D string at the second fret, you put the first finger, and on the B string at the second fret, you put the middle finger. Okay. Now, this chord, we're, we're going to block, the A string is open, we're going to block that yeah, out. Okay. That's important. Okay. Okay. So those are the three forms I commonly use. Okay. And in fact, it's on my chart of commonly used jazz chords. This one and this one okay. commonly used. I also use this for chord melody. Um, uh, oh, okay. Okay, it's a good filler chord if you need a melody note. It, it's really wild. You can what, use what what uh, sort of common jazz tune? I don't know, Sweet Georgia Brown or uh, some other number. <sighs> the problem with jazz tunes, um, let me see. See, this is this is tricky because because in jazz, when you're given a dominant seventh chord, they leave it up to you to tweak that dominant seventh oh. the way you want. So maybe they'll turn it into a diminished seventh. But even that is a little kind of plain vanilla for jazz players. Oh. So in other words, if I'm going, um, let's see, this resolution, which again is taken off the A7 chord. Here's an A7, and I have, I'll have. i keep it up top there. I raise the root a half step to get the flat 9, and relax it down to D minor. But what a jazz guy will do is, ah, it's boring, I'll... Oh, okay. So they'll add like you know tones outside of it. So the the thing is like there, there probably are tunes with written in diminished seventh chords. I just can't think of any. Yeah. Uh, the tendency is actually to find it a lot more in like uh, late sixties, early seventies pop music. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, uh, it's only because jazzers will you know seventh chords are the ones you can really 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 tweak. Okay. Out of majors, minors, and sevenths, the most tweakable are sevenths. Okay. So they work. Jazzers will work with, like in my case, when I uh, my default jazz chord melody song is um, uh, Georgia on my mind, which okay. I demonstrated before. I can use a diminished seventh, or it's it's uh, it's cousin, and it's not a cousin. It's actually the opposite and functions in a similar way is the augmented chord. Okay. So in other words, in George on my mind, I might go... There's my diminished seventh, and to my E minor. So Georgia, Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, I'll go the opposite round and do an augmented chord. I'll raise the fifth in, the, in a seventh chord. Georgia, Georgia, all right. Okay. So they're kind of interchangeable, you know. Yeah. And by the way, you know, like uh, it's kind of funny actually. The Beatles weren't using really diminished chord, seventh chords in their early material. They were using it in later material, and but they were using the augmented chord a lot in their early material. Huh. You know, it's kind of funny that way, but yeah. Which like Anna, uh, which is a kind of esoteric song not many people know. You might have heard this progression a gazillion times. Uh, I don't know if you know this song by the Dave Clark Five. This is getting really old. This is when we have a C chord, and we're moving a line up of the G. G, G sharp, A, B flat. This turns this into a C7, which brings us to F. 5-7 of F. Okay. Very, very common, uh, you know, ah. very common little trick.
Right. Th things like this should be resurrected in a new form, like in a, with a more modern sound, because they're they're useful. They're yeah. really cool. They they really stimulate the ears. Kind of like oh, there's a yeah. In fact, uh, one of my students has been studying Beatles, and uh, I forget so what song we were looking at, and. I thought I had the Beatles song like sussed out in my mind, like all the chords down. And then, you know, he shows me, oh yeah, the book has this this cool augmented chord in there. It's like, oh my god, that one <laughs> little thing made all the difference. You know, just like a special sure. little spice. Sure, you sure, know? sure. No, uh, everybody else will do sort of the, the simple straight ahead version or something. Yeah. Doesn't take much to land land differently in your ear. <laughs> 